Hey there, and welcome to The Solo Book Club, where I, Jimmy O, review your favorite books and conduct a book club all by myself. Let's get started with our next book. Welcome to Solo Book Club with me, Jimmy O. Today we're going to be reviewing The Three Body Problem, a novel by Lu Sin Chen that was published in 2008 in China and uh, translated to English in 2014. Uh, this book takes place in flashbacks and to review it and give a summary, I'm just going to give it to you in chronological order because it's kind of the easiest way to do it. So uh, first thing that happens is the Cultural Revolution in the late 60s in China. Uh, we see um, basically what we think is the main character. Her name is uh, Yi Wenji. Uh, she's an astrophysicist physicist graduate uh, who basically witnesses her father being beaten to death by his students. They're helped by, uh, by her own mother uh, and her younger sister. And they kill the guy uh, basically because he is um, a uh, educational elite. Um, Yi Wenji is officially branded a traitor and she's forced to join um, basically a labor camp uh, and she ends up befriending a government journalist uh, who asks her to help him um, in drafting a letter uh, to the government based on a book called Silent Spring which is uh, banned reading. So she read the book and she helped him uh, draft this letter. Um, at the end of the day, the Chinese government uh, ends up hearing about this and um, the uh, journalist betrays her um, and they end up imprisoning her. So um, while she's in prison, or while she's in prison, uh, she's recruited by an engineer named Yang Weining um, and Li Zhecheng. So these are two military physicists uh, that are working under Red Coast, which is a secret Chinese initiative to use high-powered radio waves to damage spy satellites. Um, so basically, they're working on on this, you know, impressive equipment, uh, and they need her help. So uh, they end up bringing her to this undisclosed location. She's basically trapped there like a prisoner. Um, so basically, while she's there, she under she understands that um, they're using these microwave uh, beams to basically send out messages. Um, and you know, while she's there, you know, she understands that that that's that there's a cover for the base. Uh, she ends up marrying um, Yang uh, uh, while she's there, um, and they end up having a daughter. So after a few years, um, something crazy happens. She's using the equipment and she receives a message from an alien. <laughs> and uh, the alien is from a planet called Trisolaris. Basically what this alien is trying to do is, is uh, they're basically trying to warn uh, Earth that there are aliens coming to earth to uh, inhabit the uh, the world because of the unstable situation that they have in their own world uh, of Trisolaris. So uh, the alien ends up telling uh, Yi Wang Jing uh, the conditions that they live in uh, there in the alien land. Um, basically it sounds like it, it, an environmental uh, catastrophe um, but uh, either way uh, she she knows that this alien is trying to warn them uh, and saying hey look these other aliens are trying to contact other worlds they are um, just wanting to know where there is life and where it exists uh, and they want to go there because they want to take over so don't respond to them well, what does Yi Wenjing do? She responds. <laughs> so she tells them, 
about um, uh, humankind and uh, and the reason she does that is mainly because of the way that she's so disillusioned with the political system that she has uh, come to live in she despises humankind um, she ends up uh, murdering her husband and her other supervisor that recruited her um, and then the next day she finds out she's pregnant so um, after that uh, they tell her, the aliens tell her well uh, look uh, the aliens are coming but they're not going to be there for 400 years so you know not her problem um, so she goes on living with uh, as a widow uh, she, she returns to the university where her father was murdered uh, and there she encounters uh, an American named Mike Evans who is extremely rich and this guy is a um, environmentalist uh, with a radical agenda so uh, basically uh, he doesn't like humankind he sees that they are um, essentially killing the planet so he would rather do it with people so once she realizes that this guy Evans is uh, really angry with humanity uh, she tells him about the aliens that are coming so um, but apparently these aliens are constantly sending in messages, like they're just pinging everywhere they can. Uh, eventually, uh, Evans finds that what she's saying is true, and he starts a secret organization uh, called the ETO, the Earth Trisolaris Earth Organization, and he appoints uh, UNG as the, um, the leader. Um, but since um, they are 450 years away, um, you know, there's so many people who are are, are are recruited into this this organization. Uh, they have a lot of time to try to get ready for the aliens. Um, and as it happens, uh, this group kind of splits into different factions. Some people want different things, uh, and the more people that they bring into the group, the more fractured they are. Uh, they have people who are what they call Adventists, who are led by Evans, and these people want the complete destruction of humanity by the by the Trisolarians, the aliens. Uh, there are other people who are known as Redemptionists. Uh, they're led by a lady named Shen Yufei, uh, and what she wants is uh, basically to uh, help the Trisolarians find a solution to their to the problem. Uh, of why their world is made inhabitable uh, and then there's another faction called the survivors uh, who uh, want to help the Trisolarians, uh, but they want to um, they want to live and let the rest of humanity just die away um, so now we move to the present day and we meet the main character his name is Wang Miao and basically this guy is a professor he works in now technology um, and one day he's suddenly asked to work with this uh, police detective who seems like a gritty uh, big city guy who doesn't take any crap from anybody. His name is uh, uh, Xi Quang. He's also known as Da Xi. Um, so the two of them uh, in, get invited to this meeting. There's people from all over the world. There's people in the CIA, uh, from Europe. Um, but they're really not saying exactly what's going on. All that they're saying is that they're having, having to prepare for a war and they need these people's uh, expertise. So over the next couple of days, uh, Wang Miao starts experiencing these strange visions. Um, and then he ends up coming across this uh, very sophisticated video game uh, that works in VR and virtual reality uh, and it's called Three Body. Uh, apparently this game was created by the ETO as a recruitment tool and unbeknownst to him uh, they're trying to figure out who they can recruit to join the ETO. Either way he starts to play uh, this game um, and the game is is about a planet whose climate is just uh, random. It goes from being very cold to very hot. They call them the stable eras, the chaotic eras, and you know during the chaotic eras everybody dies. Uh, and 
the people who are um, uh, living in the Chaotic area, they have to basically dehydrate themselves in order to preserve their life to live in the future during the stable eras. Um, so that's kind of how they have to live. Either way, in this video game, there are different characters um, who uh, try to uh, mimic uh, different philosophers, scientists like Aristotle, Isaac Newton, um, and basically they are uh, different people who are in charge and, and either way the game goes on and it shows these disasters and every time that the world ends it, it kind of gives you a counter okay this is the x amount of time that this game that the world has ended and this is how it ended so uh wang ends up getting um noticed uh because he figures out uh one that the planet has uh three suns i mean the planet's called trisolaris so obvious but he figured it out uh, that they have different compositions um, and uh, basically he knows that when there's a stable era it's when the, when the suns are furthest away from the planet the chaotic eras are when the suns are closest to the uh, planet uh, and when there's like a, a hell storm not hail, hell um, is when all the suns are close to the, the planet's surface um, he also figures out that at some point the planet is going to just plunge into the suns and uh, you know do away with whatever species lives there. Um, either way, after that, the game shows the, uh, the Trisolarians, these, these, these people on, on this unstable planet. They leave the uh, their planet and make their way to Earth, um, basically in a way as a way to escape. Uh, so once he gets the attention of the ETO, they try to induct him, um, and of course uh, he is um, still in on it with Dashi, the uh, police detective, uh, and they end up um, uh, going into these, uh, going into the meeting, and they are talking about it, and that's when they realize that uh, uh, UNV is part of this whole thing. Um, and they end up arresting her. Uh, once they arrest her, they know that Mike Evans is still involved, and they know that he has this ship with a bunch of information uh, on it, and it's information uh, about the aliens and how uh, they're communicating with him. So uh, they want to try to destroy this or capture this ship, uh, and they just they're trying to figure out different ways to do it. They end up using. Um, uh, his nanotechnology, uh, Wang Miao's technology, um, and what they do is they basically get some some nano string, which is basically it just seems like a very very small string that is indestructible. Uh, basically, it's kind of like they uh, try to trip a man with a rope, but instead of a man, it's a ship. Uh, and they put the uh, the string across in front of the ship, and as the uh, ship starts to move forward, uh, it cuts everybody um, basically into shreds. So they end up killing everybody and um, taking the information from uh, from the ship, and that's when they realize that the aliens have uh, advanced technology and it allows them to uh, basically manipulate things uh, here on earth for instance uh, this technology is as small as a, as a proton and these protons can uh, move around in such a way where they can cause hallucinations uh, and they can also spy on things um, either way that's how uh, uh, Yang Miao was having these crazy hallucinations is because he was being influenced by these aliens <laughs> and by the people helping them so um, the reason that they have these spy protons is because they are uh, trying to keep track of what's going on since they know that people on earth know that they're coming they're trying to prevent uh, humanity from, from stopping them from coming which means that they have to try to stop humanity from becoming so advanced that they learn how to fight them um, well, um, 
the way that they try to do that is by messing up uh, basically experiments. Um, they use these these uh, spy protons uh, to uh, disrupt um, uh, the progress with the particle accelerators. Uh, I think there are two of them on Earth, uh, and the aliens know that that's how humanity is going to make advancements. So they try uh, and go in there and uh, basically mess up those um, those things in order to. Um, you know, just cut off any um, scientific advancement that humanity might make. Um, so, once uh, the aliens realize that that they've been caught, that they know that they're, that humans are being watched, they end up um, uh, sending a message, um, and. They stop communicating with people because they know that that's kind of what messed them up. So they stop communicating with, with the people on Earth, and the last thing that they tell them is, you are bugs. Um, and the reason that that's so significant is because at one point, when people are pondering, when the, one of the characters is pondering, uh, you know, how aliens might view us, basically they say, well, maybe it's the way they view us, the way that we view an, an anthill. You know, to us they're just bugs. Um, so that kind of comes back. Um, so that's that's kind of a, a fear that humanity is, is kind of in danger. So now, uh, uh, now that Yi's in custody, um, she kind of um, looks back and she kind of she knows that she she did wrong. And at the end of the day, she she uh, she changes her tone, but it's too late. Um, then uh, Dashi goes and looks for Wang Miao, who is, you know, depressed because he understands what's what's happening. Um, and uh, basically, they uh, drive uh, to um, his hometown, and uh, they reflect on how um, advances um, to pesticides, you know, show that there's technological progress and that if they can, you know, progress uh, enough to fight a swarm of locusts, they can, um, you know, and they still survive. Even 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 though that there are uh, pesticides that can kill them, they still survive. Just like them, we can still manage to survive. And that's where it ends. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the book club portion of this book. Uh, and the very first question is, did you like the book? Uh, that one's kind of hard for me to respond to because yes, I did find this book very entertaining, um, but there were some things that I had problems with and they're not necessarily about the contents of the book. Um, the first thing that kind of comes to mind that I didn't like was the fact that it felt like a trilogy and it's the first third of the book so I walk in uh, to this book not knowing anything about it and it doesn't feel like anything's happening and it's just, just it's just kind of setting up what's to come later on um, and as someone who didn't realize this going in I'm disappointed I wanted a story from beginning to end in this one book and I just didn't get that I mean, the entire time, especially at the end, it felt like it was just a setup for the next book, um, which uh, I didn't really appreciate. Um, if you want to uh, put one big story together, go for it, but don't divide it up and then sell it to me three different times. I mean, that to me was just really annoying. Um, but aside from that, the other part that I, I of the book that I thought was, was lacking was uh, the hard science to kind of explain and integrate it. Uh, this book got, got sold to me as hard fiction, um, which means that uh, essentially you're going to see real life scientific uh, theories put into action uh, in this book. Um, and we did see that somewhat, but it really wasn't explained. I still had to go and look up what the three-body problem was uh, afterwards. I mean, it's just one of these things where I really didn't know what was going on. 
um, and I really wish that the book would have integrated that exp that hard science explanation into the book. Um, I, I think I would have appreciated that as a reader uh, to kind of get that information from the characters um, and have it explained through the process. Um, so that was my thought on the book. Yes, I did like it. It was entertaining, but there was a lot of things that I found issues with um, on this book. But overall, I would say uh, it gets, I don't know, maybe a 6 out of 10. Okay, the next question is, who was your favorite character? And for me, without a doubt, it was Dashi. Um, he is a no BS kind of cop. Uh, he's, he's gritty, he's gonna be in your face, he's not gonna hold back. And that's what I really appreciated about his character. Um, from, from the standpoint of getting to know the characters, none of them really had a personality. Um, and really the only one that did was Dashi, which is why I feel like he is the best character as because he had character. Um, so, you know, the, the fact that he's just kind of getting in everyone's face, doesn't care what the, the generals say, doesn't care what the CIA people say. I mean, he's just, he's just in there. And the fact of the matter is, is that he's really helping move the plot along. He's, he's the one that's uh, having uh, Yang Miao get into uh, these precarious situations. He's the one who's, who's pushing him to uh, look for clues, who's pushing him to find uh, dirt on, on these people, on these organizations. Um, so, I mean, he's just the guy that's kind of moving things along. Um, and he just has that that gruff personality that you can't help but admire um, as far as characters go um, you know Yi Wang Ji as far as uh, she goes I honestly thought she was gonna be the main character um, I, I kind of went into this book not knowing anything about it so I uh, thought she was gonna be the main character uh, and I I kind of started liking her because you kind of feel bad for her situation. I mean, uh, the government kills her parents, uh, they send her to a labor camp, they arrest her, they force her to uh, basically work isolated um, at this military base. Um, so you kind of uh, feel bad for her uh, until, you, until you realize what, what she's up to. Um, and you know that's just not not what I expected out of that character I thought she was gonna end up being the hero um, in a major way but uh, you know at, at the end of the day it is what it is that she's my favorite character next question did the book evoke any kind of emotions in you uh, well, as I explained earlier, I'm not the hugest fan of this book. I did enjoy it. I did think it was entertaining. Uh, but one thing it did manage to do was to evoke um, emotions and feelings inside of me, uh, which is great when you can get from a book because it means that you're not just reading information and storing it in your head. You're actually uh, processing it uh, and, you know, letting your emotions uh, in that process. So what I felt uh, wasn't necessarily a, a good feeling, but it was a, an actual feeling, a real feeling. Uh, I felt uh, anxious and uh, kind of uh, like a sense of desperation when uh, Yang Miao was playing the video game. Um, at first, I, I didn't like the uh, video game because it made me feel this but you know at the end I realized okay look you're feeling something that's that's always positive when you're, when you're reading but whenever he was playing the video game uh, it was just kind of a weird experience um, you know he would go in there and he would pretend to be these these other people then he'd run across these other players um, and at first I wasn't really it wasn't really clear uh, whether or not there were other players or whether it was a computer or whether it was aliens it was just very very odd uh, but you know when he's interacting with these with these other players and he's 
they're trying to figure out why the worlds keep ending and they're trying to uh, uh, live through the chaotic and uh, through the uh, good eras I mean it, it just I just every time that the game came on I just felt this like sense of anxiety I didn't like it um, but uh, you know at the end of the day it is an emotion and if a book can make you feel that then it's doing something next question is what was the most unbelievable part of this book um, to me the fact that there were that there are aliens uh, in this book's reality wasn't to me the most unbelievable thing to me the most un unbelievable thing was the fact that people that characters are so hell-bent against humanity that they would invite aliens to take over and kill everybody to me I, I just I just didn't believe that I I, <laughs> I don't really believe people like that exist um, maybe they do who knows but to me that was probably the most unbelievable part I mean alien invasion aside uh, to me it just it just seems unfathomable unfathomable that uh, you could collect a, a bunch of people together uh, and that they all are somehow okay with doing away with humanity. That that didn't make much sense to me. I thought that part was, you know, a little bit unrealistic. Um, and the fact that this group got so big, it was so uh, well funded. They were collecting nuclear weapons, and you know, at some point, nobody knew anything about them. That was also a little bit unbelievable. Uh, uh, but uh, still, the fact that there are that they're trying to make us believe that there are people out there who just hate humanity so much that they that they would, you know, encourage an alien invasion, that just doesn't make sense. I mean, if these people are really out there, you know, why aren't they, you know, wreaking some kind of other havoc? Why aren't they out there just, you know, killing as many people as they can? You know, it just didn't make sense. Next question is, what did you think of the title? Um, so this book is called The Three-Body Problem, um, which is named after a scientific, um, I think it's a scientific problem, uh, and not necessarily a theory, uh, about how whenever you have uh, three uh, celestial bodies surrounding each other that you can never really determine where they're going to go. Um, which is, you know, something that we see a little bit of in the book when it comes to the three sons. Um, you know, to me, that was the issue that I had with the book is that it really didn't go into the scientific portion of it as much as I expected it to. Um, I think it's interesting that they're integrating, you know, these scientific um, theories in. But honestly, I think the book should have been called something else like... Uh, People want to blow up the world with aliens or you know something uh, as, as far as the destructive nature of the people who are inviting these aliens to come take over and kill everybody or allow them to you know uh, take our resources um, uh, for themselves uh, I think I think that to me would have been a more appropriate uh, a title uh, if there was a little bit more science involved, a little bit more explanation of it, I think Three Body would would have been um, uh, a good title. Uh, I'm still waiting on a book that that is going to give me the science and integrate uh, the science with you know a plausible story. Uh, really didn't get it from from Three Body Problem as far as the Three Body Problem goes. All right, the next question is, what did you think about the ending? Well, I really wouldn't call it an ending. Um, to me, it just seemed like there was just so much left unsaid. Um, the fact that the plot had to do deal with these aliens who are coming to Earth 
and the fact that we didn't get to that point or anywhere near that point I just didn't like it I, I wish this book was just packaged as the trilogy in one book you know like I said I, I went in here not knowing anything about this book I had no idea there was two other parts that came afterwards um, so I was just disappointed to hear that or to read that you know you kind of have to go on to the next book uh, to me this book should stand on its own um, but it didn't. I mean, the ending is just basically Dashi and, and Yang Miao uh, pondering, you know, humanity as compared to a giant cloud of bugs. It, it wasn't satisfying. I, I didn't really enjoy that. Uh, I really wish that, that you know, maybe the, the trilogy would just be one book. I guess that's, that's really at the end of the day. Um, am I going to read the, the next two books? Mm, probably not. Um, unless I do a review about them. Uh, I guess I do have access to them, but I was just so unmotivated um, with this book that I just don't know if I can do that right now. So apparently there's going to be a Netflix series that's going to come up uh, and it's going to um, uh, be a three body, body problem TV show. Maybe I'll watch it. Who knows? Okay, uh, I feel like I've been complaining a lot about this book. So my next question is, what did you like about this book? <laughs> so uh, one of the main things that I liked uh, about this book was the fact that it was something different, something I've never uh, really read before. Uh, this is this hard fiction. I still it's still a subcategory of science fiction. Uh, it was still very interesting um, to see how you know there might be these other creatures out there, and you know they just want uh, you know to survive. That is completely relatable. Um, I think the most interesting part to me was where the alien that contacted uh, UNG uh, back in the uh, uh, in the 80s the fact that they kind of went into his her their story uh, was was really interesting to me um, you know that that it kind of showed that there there were like a, a minor alien in, in this you know outpost out in the middle of space um, and how he or she or he, they take it upon themselves to warn this planet that you know these beings are coming um, that's one one part I thought was really interesting and I, I really would have liked to have seen more of that maybe from you know the viewpoint of, of these uh, trisolarians these aliens uh, that would have been um, really interesting and, and what we, what I did get I really did enjoy Thank you so much for watching Solo Book Club with me, Jimmy O. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, as always, you're welcome to engage in the comment area. Let me know what you thought of the review. Let me know of any future books you want me to review on Solo Book Club with me, Jimmy O. Uh, and give me answers to the questions uh, for the book club. Uh, I want to hear from you. Uh, as always, thank you to Ben Sound for the music. Mr. Sound, you're the best. And again, thank you for watching Solo Book Club with me, Jimmy O.